And we have trig intervals today. And specifically, I'm going to be talking about one substitution called the Weierstrass substitution. And I'm not sure even at this point in time that that I know how to pronounce that. So um, go look up go look up a uh, flammable maths. He has this nice video about how to pronounce the names of various German mathematicians. So anyway, the Weierstrass substitution comes in really handy when you have integrals like the one here i. Uh, integrals involving rational expressions of sines and cosines. So the Weierstrass substitution is, uh, it looks like quite a simple substitution. In fact, it's where you let the tangent of your variable x, uh, well, not the exact variable, rather half of it. So you take the tangent of x by 2 and you let it equal to some other variable. In this case, let's call it phi. So the tangent of x by 2 equals phi. This is what we call the Weierstrass substitution. And this has some interesting consequences uh, that can be derived using simple expressions that I will write down later. Anyway, so according to the substitution, the sine of x becomes 2 times phi divided by 1 plus phi squared. And the cosine of x becomes 1 minus phi squared divided by 1 plus phi squared. And if you're looking for proofs of them, well, they can be deciphered pretty easily from this formula. If you have the, uh, if you want the uh, tangent of half of x, then that equals sine of x divided by 1 plus the cosine of x. And of course, you can use stuff like secants and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, it's all trivial, so it's left as an exercise to the reader. Anyway, the differential element in this case, the differential element is transformed into 2 times d phi divided by 1 plus phi squared. So all of this is left as an exercise to the reader, or the watcher in this case. So you can prove this later. Now, time to actually use the substitution. So this is your integral right? So you're now integrating, uh, instead of the dx, you now have 2 times d phi divided by 1 plus phi squared. And down here you have 1 plus the sines and uh, the sine and the cosine of x. So this is the, the sine of x and this is the cosine of x. So let's zoom back in. Uh, sine of x, sine of x was 2 times uh, phi divided by 1 plus phi squared. And uh, the cosine of x was 1 minus phi squared divided by 1 plus phi squared. So this actually makes our work a lot more simple in the phi world thanks to the, uh, thanks to the uh, Weierstrass substitution. So if you do some uh, simplification in the denominator, uh, because you have common denominators here, so up here you have 1 minus phi squared plus 2 phi divided by a 1 plus phi squared. And you have this 1 as well. And this 1 can be converted into a 1 plus phi squared by 1 plus phi squared. Where again you make use of the fact that we have common denominators. And you now write this as the integral of 2 d phi by 1 plus phi squared divided by... 1 plus phi squared plus 1 minus phi squared plus 2 phi divided by 1 plus phi squared. Oh, that's quite a lot of stuff there. But as you can see, everything cancels out pretty nicely. I mean, these things here cancel out and you got a couple of square terms in the denominator canceling out. So you're now left with uh, 2 times d phi divided by 1 plus 1, 2 and 2 plus and plus 2 phi. And the 2 can be factored out as well, and you're left with d phi by 1 plus phi. So yeah, that is a pretty good looking before and after picture we have, thanks to the, uh, the substitution that I still believe I'm mispronouncing, and I'm pronouncing it, and I'm saying it dramatically, the Weierstrass substitution. So this uh, integral can be evaluated, you can write it as the natural log of 1 plus phi, correct? plus the constant of integration c, and you have to get back the variable um, x, right? And phi, phi was just the tangent of x by 2. So there you have it. That's the first example of the Weierstrass substitution. So here's another fancy looking integral that involves uh, a rational expression of sines and cosines. 
So let's name this integral i. And before actually jumping into that Weierstrass substitution, um, perform a phase shift. It'll, it'll make life a lot easier. Let me demonstrate. We're going from the epsilon to the pi minus 2, uh, pi by 2, that is pi by 2 minus epsilon world. And you may be thinking, why epsilon? Out of all the possible letters, why epsilon? Well, I guess it was just a mood. So we have a the square of the sine of pi by 2 minus epsilon divided by the sine of pi by 2 minus epsilon plus the cosine uh, the cosine of pi by 2 minus epsilon and we're integrating with respect to this uh, epsilon variable so now you have the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the square of the cosine of epsilon divided by the cosine of epsilon plus the sine of epsilon and that is your integral i and don't forget the, the uh, differential element the epsilon. So this integral in red is your integral i and so is this integral in uh, this really bright aqua-ish color whatever it is. So these are both the same integral right and you notice one thing that you have uh, a sine square and a cosine square right. So if you add up the two integrals you can make use of the uh, handy identity in trigonometry where the sum of the uh, square of uh, the sum of the squares of the cosine and sine of x the sum of their squares equals one so up here you're left with the x and down here you had a common denominator of sorry about that plus sine epsilon and now you have something that you can evaluate using the Weierstrass substitution. So I'll leave this as an exercise as well because this seems a lot easier than the other one. And the other one was pretty easy too, to be honest. So yeah, pretty handy trick. I hope you liked the video and I hope you like the change of variables from the X world to the Epsilon world for a change. Anyway, thank you. See you next time.